letter today, 376. Kill me softly with his love, his sword, his doctrine, his way. Killing me softly with his love, telling my whole life to this world. Killing me softly. I put my hand up when the Lord said, I'm calling you to preach. Call you into my kingdom first. Now I call you to preach. Then he said, do not be afraid. When I put my hand up, he says, I'm going to tell your whole life to the world. I'm going to use you to tell your whole life to the world on how you were, how you are now and how it's going to be coming down the road. Paul the Apostle, 1 Corinthians 15.31 and Paul told his life too, didn't he? He gave his uh, life journal and life journey and uh, said he was the sinner of sinners. He was uh, b -b 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 bad to the bone, as you could say, as George would say. If we know Mr Thorogood. B -b -b bad, bad, bad to the bone. Hey, and I was bad to the bone. I was born bad to the bone. Every man and woman on the face of the earth was born bad. B -b 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 bad, bad, bad to the bone. Can you say amen? Everyone was conceived and born in sin, born dishonest, born liars and thieves, born immoral. Don't be surprised if your children do certain things as they get older because they're born that way. That's why the scriptures say that we have to be born a second time now. Start afresh, can you say amen? So, I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Praise God. I die daily. I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord I die daily. Paul is boasting here not about himself. Paul never boasted about himself uh, in an ongoing way did he? He said one time let me boast I'll be a fool for a minute but his boasting was uh, which I have in Christ Jesus telling everyone very clearly that we have nothing outside of Jesus Christ to offer anyone we have nothing which I have in Christ Jesus now we know that the church of the second command we had a look at last week and we're going into the companion of that this week We'll have a look at that later on in the main course. But um, Paul said rather to the contrary of that he was boasting of something of himself. He said, I die daily. See, this is the confirmation that he had nothing to do and was with and was not the highlight of the boasting but which I have. See that? Which I, and that's just tucked away in the middle there. I affirm by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus, Messiah, our Lord, I die daily. Paul was confessing that it had nothing to do with him. Paul was confessing that it was because he was dying daily. It was because he chose to die daily that Christ was exalted and not only exalted but manifested in those who heard him and applied the teachings of the Apostle Paul to their lives. Can someone say amen? Because of his dying daily. When each sinful situation came along Paul said a swift no thank you, I have something better, I have something more offered me I have eternal life with Christ Jesus and a hundredfold reward in the regeneration praise God if we have left anything or listen, or anyone for his name's sake or the kingdom's sake not for our sake and our kingdom's sake but for his name's sake and for his kingdom's sake. He's got a 376. Praise God. Killing me softly with his.
his love, killing me softly with his love, telling my whole life to this world, killing me softly with his love, with his sword, with his word. I heard he sang a new song, whoa, I heard he sang a song, killing me and I'm loving it, I He's killing me softly, dialy, with, with that doctor and that sword. He just keeps killing me. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh! Oh! Mm. Ah! Mm. <coughs> oh! <laughs> no one, no one, the Paul said. Who, who are you, Lord? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Go easy. <laughs> hey? Killing me softly. With his love, killing me softly. Well, the world is celebrating today the day that they, they not the Bible, but the day that they call Mother's Day. And, I mean, it's very depleted, isn't it? It's very sad. It's not biblical. Once again, as usual, even though the churches have latched on to it with all teeth, hey? both hands and all teeth have got the molars stuck in there. Mother's Day, you know. And look, there's nothing, look, I want my children to grow up respecting my wife daily, not once a year, but isn't it typical of religion, brethren? Isn't it typical of religion and the world false humility that they would go about this Mother's Day once a year just like we do with the tree season, the, the uh, Santa Claus season and the rabbit season, hey? Um, once a year again and then we wash our hands of it you know and we can get back to um, getting animal again you know we go back as they say in Bali you know we can't wait to get back to normal hey thank you sister <laughs> we can't wait to get back to normal normal behaviour heathen sinful immoral behaviour we can't wait to get back to normal Mother's Day is a celebration once a year but the scriptures tell us that children are to respect their mother every day the, the scriptures tell us that a husband is to love his wife every day the scriptures tell us that a woman is to respect her husband every day not just on Father's Day Come on. We're not just to praise the Lord when the rabbit season comes. We're not just to think and consider the death, burial and resurrection, the power thereof once a year. We're to consider that every day. And if we did consider that every day, listen, in every way, in every situation that confronts us, if we did consider the death, burial and resurrection on a daily basis and, and, and forget not what he has done for us and lived for him who died for us the cruel death upon the cross and no longer for ourselves we wouldn't be bogged down in sin we wouldn't be bogged down with worry because worry is sin we wouldn't be bogged down with all the rest because we'd realise on the consideration of the death, burial and resurrection of the Christ that we have been allotted power and there is power available for us to lay a hold of at the ready any time of the day or night, Holy Ghost power, can you say amen? amen? To overcome the obstacle under my grace, over the obstacles and under my wings, I heard him call for me by the vessel of an indigenous man. How do I say yes? Under my grace, over the obstacles and under his wings. I heard him call a second time, praise God, call you now to speak hey? and look there's people writing books about my song they're writing books about you know step one under his grace, step two over the obstacle, step three the three steps you know and, and they're writing books about the teachings of this small 
fellowship and ministry and making dough on it. Well, I am here to make many rich. The Bible says we make many rich, don't we? I tell you, I've made millionaires out of many of them. They've never mentioned my name as the originator of what they were thinking or how they were inspired to write it, I can tell you now. But that's okay with me. My rewards are in glory. They've got their consolation now with their $30 book. I mean, they've got their consolation, even though it is going against the established canning of selling the Word of God. But they don't care about that, do they? It's even said in this day and age that we're to love our brethren and brothers first, which is our message last week, the church of the second command, coming to fruition. That message of the church of the second command that I preached on the 6th of May was confirmed by a so-called, so-called prophet in New York. That was confirmation of our message that there is such a church as the church of the second command and that that man was ministering in his own pulpit in New York on the 6th of May 2007 David Wilkinson so called prophet so called prophet was saying that we love our brethren first and, we, and then we can't love God if we don't love our brethren first but the scriptures tell us clearly we're in darkness until that very moment we've always been in darkness we haven't even been born again from above we haven't had the light if we don't love our brother and our brethren can you say amen let me read it to you brethren in 1 John please let's go to 1 John and, and let's clear this rubbish matter up once and for all 1 John chapter 2 verse 11 But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Now how can that person have the light? That person never had the light. Did you know the scriptures say in John 15 too that we can do not one thing without him? How in the world are you going to love your brethren? How in the world can you love your brethren without, without God? Unless you first love him. Do you know Paul Sheehan, Paul Sheehan could never love God or his neighbour as himself or his brother until God first loved me. And that's the glory of the whole lot. And it belongs, Joe, and it belongs to Jesus, the glory, not to any man. You cannot love your neighbour or your brother as yourself until you're first born of the Spirit of the God of love, born again from above. And it is an insult to the new covenant that we are given by Yahweh, Almighty God, to love him first and then love your neighbour as you love yourself. And I tell you, your neighbour is your brother. And the scriptures tell us that we must be certain that they are brethren. And Jesus clarified that by saying this, they are my brother, they are my brethren, 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 they are my brothers, my sisters and my mothers who hear this word and do it. And you're not a brethren until that has happened. You're not a true brethren. You might belong to the, the Plymouth brethren or you might belong to the select or the elect or, or the exclusive brethren or whatever you have. But the true brethren of the Christ, the Bible says, they are the ones who hear the words of the Father and do them. Not even Mary, the dead village girl. Not even Mary... was accepted by the Christ if she didn't want to do what Father said. And you know, the latest I have heard 
from a Roman Catholic priest and these are the ones the Assembly of God and penny pension Pentecostals are associating with and tying themselves to these days a Roman Catholic priest Father Byrne Father Byrne said this he said that Mary is the one that you need to pray to and call out to for help and he also said that she is there with her power waiting to help you if you'll only call upon Mary call upon the Blessed Mother this is Roman Catholicism at its best and that we actually come to Jesus through Mary now you tell me if that's not heresy and blasphemy all in one I don't know what is but you can't love your brother and you can't love your neighbor unless you have kept the first command he must the scriptures say listen to me please brethren turn with me to Colossians turn with me to Colossians the word of God not some false prophet not some lion backslidden minister the word of God Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 and he is the head of the body or the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things all things he may have preeminence that he's number one he's before your brethren he's before the church he's before your neighbor he, Jesus must be before your wife and children he must be number one Jesus said clearly Mashiach not some backslidden Pentecostal who has backslidden to prosperity garbage teaching and heretics you listening David Wilkerson was asked the question did he coincide did he accept and go along with word faith Pentecostal American word faith teachers he didn't have the backbone to answer but I tell you now I know he does and I know he's getting handouts too and I know that very clearly he David Wilkerson, the so-called prophet, I tell you what, he's backslidden in his theology. There's no doubt in my mind. The word of God is clear. He must have the preeminence. The word of God is clear. You're not even born again. You haven't even been born of the Spirit of God. You've got no light. You've never had any light. And you've never walked in the light if you hate your brother and what man in his right godly mind would hate his true brethren, brother who, who could hate a man that does what Jesus says who could hate a woman that does exactly what Jesus says there's no room because there's no law against agape love I'm talking agape love and that's what Jesus is talking about through John the beloved when he says love, love your brother and your brother. He's talking about agape. He's not talking about eros and philio. He's talking about agape love. It's a lot of difference. We know that a philio love and, agape and eros love, everyone has that from the day we were born. And it doesn't done us much good, has it? It hasn't done us any good. Any lasting good. That's why we have to be born again. Killing me softly with his love. Killing me softly with his love. Agape love. Telling the whole world of my life. Killing me softly with his love. Sword doctrine. I tell you what, if this does not come into your life and sever bone from marrow gel and soul from spirit. I tell you what, never in a million years are you going to die to self. Never in a million years are you going to die daily, as Paul said. 
It was because of the doctrine, because of the established canon. The power of the, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul was born again on the Damascus road. He came to know the Christ and made a decision from that time forward to walk on with him. What do you want me to do? Not what can I do for Freddie and Mary Lou. That is Eros and Ophelio. It's all looking after the flesh and so on. It's the church of the second command and it's growing like poison ivy. Everyone's getting bogged down with pleasing their neighbour first. I'm telling you, it's the flesh. It's solid. It's the pits of hell. 